Okay, so here are all of the things that you're going to need in order to build your melamine cage. First off, you're going to need your melamine in many different shapes and forms, whichever size cage you decide to go with will depend upon the cuts for your melamine. Um, another thing you're going to need is a variety of different screws. Um, you're going to obviously need a drill, um, a cock gun, some clamps. Um, these will be for the tracks, for the glass doors or plexiglass. Um, that's another thing you'll need is glass. Um, again, will depend on the size of your enclosure. Uh, you can go with glass or plexiglass, your choice. They both have their pros and cons. Another thing you're going to need is um, these kind of drill bits to make holes for ventilation. Uh, very simple, very basic sorts of things. This is just a one inch, but you're going to need a little bit bigger than that. Um, light bulbs of different wattage. Um, you'll just have to test out the wattage for your enclosure to make sure that this certain wattage that you chose will get adequate temperatures. Um, some kind of fixture for your UVB, UVA bulb, which again I recommend the Reptisun 10.0 for Bearded Dragons. It's um, a really good bulb. Another thing for your um, soft white light bulbs, you're going to want one of these. These you can pick up um, essentially any hardware store. This one is a ceramic, I believe. Uh, this is what I recommend. They sell them in plastic, which is what I have, I have here. Um, again, the same thing, but just the plastic form. I, I prefer this. I just don't like the um, metal heating or the plastic heating up and potentially emitting any kind of toxins. Not saying that will happen, but it could. So go with one of these. It's really basic. You um, essentially take your plug here, one of your wires, you strip it. And then you'll plug it into the positive and the negatives. And then there you go. You're good to go with that. And it comes with two screws that are um, ready for you to install into your cage. This is a vent for obvious reasons, some more ventilation. You can cut these in thirds or in halves or whatever you may uh, decide. But they do come in different variety of, of shapes and sizes. Another thing you're going to want is some kind of Loctite or liquid nails. Um, this will be to secure your tracks onto the melamine itself. So let's say you have like a two inch strap here where the tracks will be sliding back and forth. That Loctite is to secure that on here. And again, you can use any kind of Loctite um, or liquid nails, whatever it may be. The silicone is for the edging. Uh, let's see, let's say for example, you have something like this. You're going to want to put the silicone right along there to secure any water from seeping into this particle board because it will expand and just destroy your cage. So make sure you choose a proper silicone uh, for your cage. Let's see, what else do we need? Um, you don't need this, but it's just an addition. Melamine edging tape. Uh, it just kind of covers up all the nasty melamine particle board pieces themselves. And we have just a, another variety of different screws and, and um, nails themselves to choose from. Uh, and then everything else is basically extras. This is going to be for the cricket cage, um, some kind of aluminum mesh to make sure that they do not escape uh, crickets and all that other fun stuff. So before you start building your enclosure, you want to make sure that your fixtures are um, properly placed in there first. Otherwise, you're going to be working upside down to apply those. So here's what I have here. Um, you can put your fluorescent in any way you want, caddy corner like this. Um, again, it's completely up to you, your orientation of the fixtures themselves. But go ahead and apply them first, and then you'll build the enclosure so that way, like I said, you're not building upside down. They're very simple. They come with two... Um, ports for your screws to go into. Same thing with the UVA, UVB bulb. One is here and one is there. They're all pretty similar so you'll just have to look on the back of yours and go from there. You'll also want to pre-drill your holes for the plugs themselves, the wiring to go through the back or the top or wherever it is that you're you're making that hole. Um, you want to make those first as well so that way you can kind of plan better. One other note that I did want to mention is 
it is crucial that you pre-drill your holes. Otherwise, if you just decide to try to drill in with your screw right into this, this kind of plasticky, uh, the surface area, the white area, will crack very easily if you do not make a porthole or a pilot hole. So use one of these bits, um, a little bit less in diameter than your screw itself. Drill that, and then you'll drill the screw on top. All right, so I apologize for the change in lighting because I'm sure it's extremely awkward, but I um, ran into some issues with other things. I had a couple other things going on, so I had to continue at night. And unfortunately, in the room I'm at, it currently does not have an overhead light. So I'm working with the reptile cage light and my phone light. So here's what we're at right now. Okay, so as you can see, we currently have um, just the boards themselves sort of propped up. Um, what you'll do is, if you're not working with someone else, you will just roughly place, say like the back side and a side. So you have the back piece and a side piece next to each other on a flat piece of uh, melamine or whatever you're working on, concrete, a desk, whatever it may be, just to support it and place them side by side and kind of put a weight on top so it, it holds it a little bit better or you can even use some kind of clamps the gist here is just to make sure that your two sides are matching they line up vertically and as well as horizontally um, or horizontally and vertically and then what you're going to do is you're going to make your pilot holes and then just throw a couple of screws in to secure it so now I can take off this top piece here and then these two are essentially one. I'm going to go ahead and throw in two more screws here just to secure this, make sure this is extra secure. And I'll go ahead and continue the, the rest of the cage in that fashion. So you'll screw in all your screw holes, pilot first, and then your screws. You'll make your back piece, your side pieces, and then you'll throw on your top and bottom. Uh, and I will show you that in a minute. All right, so now that you have your side back and other side on um, it essentially looks just like this in the other side four screws right on the back side what you're gonna do is you're gonna place what will be your bottom piece you can place your bottom first screw it in in multiple locations all across the tops here or what will be the bottom so essentially working on uh, this will be the top piece and this will be the bottom piece and then we'll flip it and then we'll add the top on. So same thing with what you just did on the sides. Make your pilots first and then go along the uh, the melamine here and screw in and then we'll flip it and do the top. Okay, now that it's another day because some things arose, um, I broke my bit, my piloting bit. So I had to wait a whole nother day to start it back up again. So here we are, we're at the front side of the cage and I will show you that in one second. All right, so if you see here, we have all sides on except for the top. Um, the only thing we need to do now is put the front piece on where the track will be. So the track will sit here. And then it'll also sit at the top of the cage as well. So this essentially <clears throat> spans the length of the cage minus your two sides. Uh, this will be to make sure that your dragon or whatever you have in here cannot, you know, you don't want the sliding glass right here on the base of the bottom piece. You want it a little bit above. Plus it gives the beauty kind of something to look up out. Now that you have this piece on here, all you gotta do, you know, screw one on this side, one on the other side, and then you gotta screw a couple on the bottom, and then you're done. All right, so now that your bottom pier uh, panel is on, all you're gonna wanna do is measure the length your track needs to run from right wall to left wall. So what I do is I take a tape measure and I measure as far as I can over. So I'm sitting at about 46 and a quarter from wall to wall. So what you want to do is make sure that your, your track is a little bit less than that so it fits in here nice and snug and can go as far over to each side as it can. So you'll do one here and then one at the top as well. So one at the top, one at the bottom, and you're good to go for the tracks in the glass wall or acrylic or plexiglass, whichever you decide to go with. Okay, so for the tracks themselves, again, you can find these sort of tracks 
anywhere in Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace Hardware, anything like that. This is actually a um, half, so it looks like this, but just flipped on the other side of what it came with. So it comes, it's a, it's a very long length. And all you got to do is just measure it, put another one next to it, and then you got two tracks. So one track, two track. One glass, two glass. So they can slide next to each other. Makes sense. Pretty basic. So you'll measure out what you need, and then you'll get, uh, depending upon the product you chose, maybe aluminum and maybe this hard ABS plastic like I have here, you can use a saw, um, maybe some kind of utility knife, or anything else you can find. Okay, so as you can see, the track is cut and kind of just roughly placed on there. It's not, it's not adhered to the melamine itself yet, but that's what I wanted to talk to you about now. You have your track, you have your melamine, you have your Loctite slash liquid nails, and you're set to go. So all you're going to do is just pop it in the gun, pick up the track, of course, lay it down, and squirt across the board itself. At that point, you're going to go ahead and apply your track, give it a little little wiggle just to secure it in place because that helps it adhere a lot better. And this is about the distance, if you can see that. That's about the distance I want to see between your side board and your bottom piece. So your glass has a little bit of a wiggle, so that'll be perfect. Okay, now that you have your clamps on, nice and secure, Loctite's down, your two tracks are on, you're about to throw your other ones up. You should be good to go. Do the same thing you did down here on the bottom side for the top side for your two tracks or one track, whatever you guys have. Just apply it and then clamp it. Let it dry for a minimum of 24 hours, whatever your bottle says on the back, and you should be good to go. Now we have the top on, as you can see. Top's on, bottom's on. All we have to do is add the track to the top. Um, but unfortunately, in my case, this is a little bit tall, so I'll have to take this back out and cut just a little bit back so the glass can fit between the bottom of the cage and the top of the cage. So what we're going to do now is you're going to take your, your bit on your drill like I was talking about before and then find wherever you want to. I'm going to go just right in the dead center here to make a room for or a little hole for this plug as well as your incandescent light bulb there. Alright, here is the final cage all done. We got all pieces, top, bottom, everything. We have our tracks on both top and bottom. And our lights are all set up and hooked in through the hole that we made earlier. And we also have our sliding glass, which works perfectly. Little suggestion, little suggestion, ah, suggestion about the glass itself. Um, it is definitely helpful to have another person with you when placing the glass because whenever you're trying to lift up the top piece here, um, it's hard to place it in there like that. So what you want to do is you want to place the bottom in first and then just unscrew your top piece. Go ahead and place the track within or the window within the track itself and then just re-screw the top back on. That's the best way to handle that. But make sure that they slide really well before you go ahead and secure your top piece on firmly so you don't break the glass or bend the acrylic that you have in there. So make sure that your temperatures are good, you got your UVA, UVB, which is crucial for beauties and all the most other lizards, and then you're good to go. So if you guys like what you saw and you thought it was helpful, please feel free to subscribe and like the video. I do appreciate all your help, and hopefully we'll see you guys soon. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below, and I will try to get to them as soon as I can. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.